In Europe, the jubilation at the coming of peace was followed by shortages and austerity. In damaged Italian towns where people were homeless and hungry, the Allies helped the cinemas reopen and supplied films that showed a better world. After the war, everybody was demoralized. We needed an escape from all that misery, so the cinema was very important for everyone. Once again, after another war, it was American film studios that were booming. In much of Europe, film production had been brought to a halt. But on both sides of the Atlantic, more people wanted to go to the cinema than ever before. In 1946, 90 million Americans went each week. The same American films filled the void in Europe. In Britain, admissions topped 31 million a week. During the war, the enemy and occupied countries had been starved of American films. Now they could see all the epics and musicals they'd missed. Hollywood and the American government ensured they were available. In 1947, 600 American films were distributed in Italy, but only 65 Italian films were made. European politicians and trade unions complained about an American invasion. Personalities who claimed the limelight in the week's news were found in Paris. A film workers' demonstration disturbed the calm of the French capital Sunday. The film workers claim that the agreement permitting American films to enter France is killing French productions. European governments tried to help their own film industries. Italian filmmakers dealt with the grim social problems of the time. But the realistic films many post-war directors wanted to make weren't usually what the audience wanted to see. Even bad American movies were better than Italian films. I always dreamed about America, and anyone like me who dreamed about America has said, I was born in a village, but I have to go to America. I didn't know how to make this dream come true, but it was important to state, I must go to America. For Europeans, Hollywood films, with their stars and big budgets, were as hypnotic as ever. American musicals of the late 1940s were aggressive displays of American values. We've sailed the seas and we've been the world over, we've been to Mandalay. We've seen the Sphinx and seen the cliffs of Dover, but we can safely say the most fabulous sight is New York in the light of the day. Our only day. New York, New York, a wonderful town. The Bronx is up and the battery's down. The people ride in the hole in the ground. New York, New York. In the East, Soviet bloc audiences were offered films that could be as spectacular as Hollywood's. But the stars were different. <laughs> 